Good morning. My name's Barbara. I'm one of the elders here at Cornerstone. My first question of the day is, and you have to be honest, did anyone see me almost fall off the chair over here? <laughs> Was that not the greatest recovery in the world? I mean, it would have been another inch and gravity would have totally, I tried to be, thank you for no, no laughter. So you're so respectful. Oh my goodness, I almost had a heart attack. <clears throat> it's not what our sermon's about, but. I do need to preface this with, um, I have been having some trouble with my throat and um, I'm good, I'm getting better, I'm healed. But if you see me constantly putting something in my mouth, it's hauls. That's all it is, it's just hauls. And it'll keep me, keep me going, I think. So, except I just dropped it. Okay, now I can't really eat it because that would seem, you know. If I was home, but since I'm in front of everyone else, I'll just take another one. This is not a stand-up routine, honestly. I am going to preach. <laughs> Actually, I sort of, uh, you know, we're, we're going to um, talk again about our mission statement, our new mission statement that we're um, sharing with everyone and talking about together. And I... I really feel like it's kind of a, it's kind of like a word of encouragement to the body today. Um, and I, I sort of feel like we are a team and that God is here this morning to speak his simple truths about his love. And, um, I remember when I, before I became a Christian, before I accepted Christ, many Christians that I knew would say to me, Jesus loves you. And to me, it was so hollow. I would look back at them with sort of a dead look in my eyes, and inside I would be thinking, you don't mean that. He doesn't love me. I'm not... No. And I could never open up to it except the day that he poured out his grace over my life and I believed. And I sensed that love which truly comes from him, truly is transforming, truly takes from one kingdom into the kingdom of light. That was my experience. I'm grateful today. The greatest thing about my life is that God loves me. So we're going to talk a little bit this morning. It's not a, a long talk, but I believe the Holy Spirit wants to drop into every heart this morning the love of God. If you've never felt that or sensed that or had that experience, it's going to happen this morning. If you know God, you're familiar with him, you have faith, you believe that he loves you, there's more love. He's the creator of the universe. He's the greatest. So this morning, our mission statement's loving God and loving one another fearlessly. And I started out just thinking, well, how do I, how do I love God? How do I love God? And I'm going to give a couple people a chance in a few minutes to share that. Because, you know, I look for him everywhere. Not 100% of the time, not perfectly, you know. But I look, I look for him through the day, and he's everywhere. He 
He is everywhere. Um, just reaching out to a woman at the deli counter at Giant began a conversation that was so beautiful. In worship, I'm loving, we're loving God in worship. We're praising him. We're singing to him. Probably one of my favorites is in creation when um, you just see the beauty of what God created. At Longwood, there's an orchid extravaganza. There are 1,400 different kinds of orchids. And I look at that, I say, oh, God, I love, you're just so amazing. So how, how do you love God? Just a couple people. How do you love God? Like, you, like here we're saying we're loving God. How are we doing that? How are we loving him? Just if anyone has, feels comfortable enough to share, just think about it for a minute. Hmm. Yes. The innocence of little children laughing. Yes. Yeah. Having God's love. Yes. Thank you, Cindy. Yes. Yes. Oh, that is profound. That is profound. That's right. Very good. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Reaching out as Jesus would. Visit the elderly. Could you say that again? Yes. Yes. Putting others first. So these are things. This is how we live life. If we're going to say to, to ourselves each day, well, part of the, my mission is to love God. Let's pray about that more. Let's, let's look each day for him and for opportunities to, to love him. But you know what the sweetest place? The sweetest place is when we are with him in the quiet or in, or in the noisy and we remember what he did for us. We remember what he rescued us from. We remember how he loved us when no one else did. How he loved us without words. It's just the spirit upon us. Isn't that the sweetest? We're going to have an opportunity uh, later today to take communion together. Which is when, you know, we always think about who he is and his sacrifice. Uh, sacrifice that Jesus made for us. How sweet to remember that. How sweet to accept that. Accept the love that he had for us. Like our friend over there. What's your name, sir? Kevin? Devin. Devin. Um, by just accepting God's love. That's really powerful because, you know, the story is that God is love. God is love. He rescued me. Every time we sing about re being rescued, it's fresh. He rescued us. He rescued us. And every day we have an opportunity for life, which we also shared this morning so how do we know how to love? 1 John 4, 7 to 8. How do we know how to love? I think some people are, tend to be more friendly, more outgoing, more loving. Not everybody. But you know, we're talking about a love that's greater than ourselves. In 1 John 4, 7, 8, John said, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is the simple truth. 
This is who we run to to understand love, to have an experience of love. So how do we love one another? Our relationship with God is at the core of loving God and loving one another. Our relationship with God is at the core. We spent two years reading and studying about being in Christ. Remember? In Christ. This place where we are in Christ with God is where the love comes. It originates to the way that we treat others and love others. So I'm here to say this morning, yes, there's lots of different things that we can do, but the first thing we can do, the best thing that we can do is to be with God loving him. And as we're loving him, the way that he responds to us will help us to love. Does anyone... Does anyone believe that that is the core of it? I mean, we can go many places to learn, 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 but the core of the spirit of a person, uh, the mind of a person, is the truth of the relationship that we have as individuals with God and that we have as a community, as a team. The power of that is amazing. So I'm here today not to say anything new. I'm here to say the things that are true. Because it's our connection and our relationship with God that makes it possible for us to love as God loves. This is a mighty call that we have on our community. This is huge. We are at the, we are at, uh, not that we haven't been loving, of course. You know, we all have relationships. We've been loving. We've been, we've been, this is a great place, right? But there's something more. It's a mystery to me. There's something about how God loves without all the junk I go through in between. There's something about it that is powerful that he wants us to know ourselves. In 1 John 4, verses 9 to 10, John says, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him in Christ. That we might live through him. So we're constantly coming back to home base throughout the day. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins, that he bore our sins. This is a, this is a, a truth that needs a fresh revolution. Uh, revolution. Re- yeah, that's true. That too. <laughs> revelation of what, what, it, what this. This is truth. This is what God did for us. This is who he is to us. And it is the greatest love because it's a love that none of us could have done. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. So at the core of our loving are these truths. And so how often should we go back to these truths? Once a year? Once a month? Once a week? Every day? Except Sundays? Every day. How about twice a day? How often do you need to return to the reality of this relationship of who God has been to you and how great his love is for you that the Father sent Jesus to suffer 
and sacrifice take up our sin. Why does growing God, why does knowing God create loving people? Well, first of all, you know, you need to think about whether you really want to be a loving person or not. (laughs) Pastor Tracy would amen that one. Uh, You know, I'm not so sure all the time. it's, It's a hard thing to be loving. It's so beautiful, though. It's so beautiful. And it's what the world needs. It's what we need. It's what's needed. If you are in your car and you park in the parking lot and you're just really upset because some person did something stupid, which people do when they're driving, sorry, my opinion, you know, Do you get out of the car and stomp up to the store and like snarl at people the whole time you're in there? Or do you take a moment in the car and say, Lord, you know, this is nothing. You loved me. You rescued me. You loved me before I was even ever born. You loved me. Do I need to remind myself of that? Yes, I do. I do. Does it seem like, oh, that's just Christian stuff? Well, yes, it is, and yes, I need to remember it, and yes, I need to declare it every day, every day. Because a little bit, (laughs) this is a risky, but a little bit like the conversations that are happening in Minneapolis today to bring people together, to, to shore them up with what is truth, to to give direction to people, to encourage them, to keep them moving. This is what our relationship with God needs from one another. We need to think on him always. If you believe that, I know you're doing it. You guys are awesome, awesome. But there's always another step, isn't there? There's always another step closer to who God is. Someday we're going to stand there in his presence. And I don't want to just in a blah way go through my life. When I stand there with him, I want to be happy that I know him a little bit because I pressed in every day through every feeling that didn't feel like doing it. And God help me. God help us. Because someday... That's where we're going to stand with him forever, forever. I love it. That's crazy Christian stuff, isn't it? (laughs) So the father sent his son to teach us how to love God, the father, and to teach us how to love one another. And Jesus came and walked on the earth, actually walked on the earth. Just think about these simple things. He was here. It's amazing. And he came to show us how he loved the Father and how he loved others fearlessly. That's a good word for today. Fearlessly. That means without fear. Oh, no, wait a minute. (laughs) Without fear. So Jesus, when he walked, without fear, he had no fear. The people that he met, the people that were unkind to him, the people that eventually murdered him, he had no fear. That doesn't mean that you're not going to feel fear. We are fearless because of God. We are fearless because of our relationship with him. We are fearless because this is a mission that God has given us. We are fearless because we're going to press on. We're going to pick each other up. We're going to keep going so that all the world may know that he is real, that he is a real God. So Jesus came so we can watch him and watch what he does and what he did. 
Perfect love expels all fear. 1 John 4.18 Perfect love expels all fear. So if I'm connecting with God and his love for me, his perfect love, fear is gone. But we have to work through that feeling, don't we? Because it's, let's be honest, we, ha- we have to work through that feeling. And it is a feeling. It's a feeling. Feelings are good, but they're, and sometimes they're not good, but they're not what drives us. It's not the feelings that drive us. It's the reality of God's love for us, his consistent, never-changing love for us. We, each day, need to renew our minds. We, every day, need to look at ourselves and say, wow, I feel terrible, I have so much anxiety, um, kind of like I did this week while I was getting ready for the, for the preaching. That's not the truth. The fear isn't the truth. The reality of God's love is the truth. And that's what we have to remember. And that's what we have to say to one another. I'm not minimizing that fear and not in any way. Or that depression, you know, or the things that just pull us inward and want us, want us to hide. We just want to hide. I'm not minimizing that. But we're, we're a mighty force in here. We have the spirit of the living God within us. Just think about that. That always blows me away. The spirit of the living God lives within us. That is powerful. And we have a mission. We have a mission to love God, and we have a mission to love one another. And that's what we're called to. And as God heals us, strengthens us, I almost wish I could see those people again that said, Jesus loves you. And I just stared back at them like, no, he doesn't. Because yes, he does. Yes, he does. He does love me. Do you ever wonder? Let's talk about Jesus briefly. You know the Pharisees, right? The Pharisees were like these legal guys that really hated Jesus, like really hated Jesus, like hated him to death. Why? When he was here with us teaching us about God's love, why? Why did they hate him so much? Well, because he kept saying he was God. They didn't like that at all. But you know what they really didn't like? They didn't like the people who Jesus was hanging out with. That's what they didn't like. Because they were better than those other people. And every time Jesus gave his, his attention, his touch, his prayer, every time he gave something like that to them, it just made them so angry. They hated him. Well, that's who we, we are, looking at Jesus. We're following his example, and we are walking on the earth to show each other, one another, and to show the world who God is. That's a mighty, mighty call. And he's called us to it because he knows that who he is in us is enough for it, enough to have it happen. He's going to be faithful to us. He hung around with the poor, the sick, those that were sinning against the law, the lonely. Who did he hang around with? And they couldn't stand it. But Jesus knew who he wanted to, who he loved, who the Father loved. All people. All people. He allowed the woman to come and anoint him because she was so humble and and grieving in her own sin. And the Pharisee hated that, that he that Jesus couldn't see what was going on. Jesus saw what was going on. Jesus ministered to the woman. He sent out his 12 to do the same, sending us out to look at, to help in the victims of injustice, people that are struggling in so many ways. So here we are, and he's, he's called us to love. And we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is turn back to the Father and experience his love. 
We're going to be looking for him everywhere and saying, Lord, uh, where are you? Where are you right now? Where are you working? There's a gentleman uh, in the past. His name was uh, Henry Blackaby. He had this uh, teaching about looking for God where he is and then joining him. And that's what we're going to do. We're, we're already doing that in our community. We're already doing that. We're already looking to see where God is and then we're joining him in that. And that's how we need to be praying, all of us, as individuals and as a church community. Lord, where are you working and where can we join you? People that are pushed aside, people that are mistreated by leaders, people with power who mistreat, that's who Jesus, that's who Jesus went to and brought hope, hope, city of hope. And it's the same today. It was the same when Jesus was on earth, and it's the same today. There are many, many people that need our love. So I'm almost finished. I hope, I hope that the reality of God's love will be remembered with a new um, new energy. In John, the Gospel, uh, verse uh, chapter thirteen, John wrote, "A new command I give you: love one another." Do you notice this crops up a lot in Scripture? I, it's amazing how often we keep getting turned back to love, turned back to love. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And by this, all men will know, all people will know, that you are my disciples if you love one another. Now, as we grow in this, as God leads us, um, as, he, as he does his thing among us to give us direction and, and breathe his life into the sound of what the loving, the sound of the loving, the sound of touching other people's lives will be far greater, far louder, far sweeter than any sound on a football, t football field today. This is an amazing thing that God is calling us to. Not an easy thing. Not an easy thing. But, if, but something that God created us for. I would encourage you, um, as I encouraged my, have encouraged myself, to read 1 Corinthians 13. Just, just reading through it. Just, you know, every once a week or every night before you go to bed or whatever. Just read through it because there, what you'll find in that, in that uh, chapter is, whew, that's, that's love. Okay, Lord, I read it. Pastor Tracy didn't get very far with, with um, <laughs> love is patient, and I didn't get very far either. I put it on my computer at, at work, and it said, love is patient. Love is patient. And I thought I would be changing it. Oh, so the next week I'll put love is kind. No, love is patient. <laughs> love is patient. I'm still there. But it's a beautiful, beautiful description of God's love. So I pray today that, that the reality of God's love is made clearer to all of us. All of us. And... Um, I just want to leave you with a thought. Um, we are going to uh, be receiving communion together. What a, what a perfect conclusion to, to the word this morning that you know, we have the opportunity to remember Jesus and who he is to us and who we are to him. But there was a gentleman, um, an, a minister from England, and I read this quote um, he, was, he lived in the 1800s. He wasn't even well known. 
But everyone around him knew him as a very humble man. And there's a phrase here, and it challenges me. So I want to share it with you. He said, my business is to love others, not to seek that others shall love me. It's really sticking there with me. I, my job is to love others, my purpose, my alignment with Christ, God the Father, the Holy Spirit. But so often I react to how someone hasn't loved me. And just this week, I'm gone. I just said, that's not the point. The point is that I'm called, that we're called as individuals and as a community. We're called to love others. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful word. And so we just quickly go into the communion. And sometimes people will ask a question. What do we have communion? It all based around what we have heard today. So that we will constantly be reminded of how God has loved us and how he continues to love us. So by partaking of the communion, we declare to the world that God loved me so much that he allowed his body to be broken for me. He went willingly to the cross to share his blood to wash away my sin. This is the only religion that I know of that we are to be reminded daily. And the reason is so that we will not step out of bounds. As one of my brothers said, that we will remain in line. So this morning, as we come to be part of the Lord's table, we should be reminded that this is how God loves us. These are just symbols. Because the time Jesus did this, he had not died yet. So, on the night before Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And he broke it and said to his disciples, this is my body, which is broken for you. Telling the disciples, this is how it's going to be. My body will be broken for you. And that is the depth of God's love for us. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and said to the disciples, this is my blood of the new covenant, new agreement between you and me. My blood will be shared for you. And as often as you partake of the bread and the wine you are declaring to the world of how I love you till I return for you. So this is just symbol. Though other people have a belief that this is actually the blood of Jesus. I don't believe that. This is just grape juice. This is just grape juice. 
But the essence of this is for us to be reminded that Jesus was willing to give himself for you and for me. So I now call on the servers to come forth. So the musician, Fries, they're already there, okay. So now everyone is welcome. Yes, so come in this way and go out this way, the other way.
You know, the body of Christ is beautiful. We're all different in many ways. That's, I think that's our beauty, you know, and we love one another and we love our God. I just wanted to remind you that um, the offerings are taken by way of the box, boxes in the back, and we will pray over it in just a moment. Uh, this is a visitor card that you filled it out. Make sure you put it in the offering box. I think there were a couple people, but not sure. These are prayer requests, and fill these out. And uh, where are they collected? Just in the offering box, okay? Pardon me. Put everything in the box. Okay, I got it. Got it. And these cards, uh, these requests, are prayed over on Tuesday evening before the service. So we do, as a, as a community, we take prayer seriously, and uh, they will be prayed over. So let's stand for the benediction. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for who you are to us and just who you are. <laughs> You're so amazing. Uh, we thank you for the faithful in this congregation, Lord God, in, a, in this community, and, and together we pray over the uh, finances for our community here. Lord, that you would increase them according to your will. That you would build the store, storage, Lord, area uh, in the church for your needs, Lord, for the needs of your people. That we would be generous uh, one another to your work, Lord, here in Westchester, Pennsylvania, here in our lives. And so we go out today, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings over each and every one of us. We thank you that the revelation of your love has come, is coming, and will continue to come to us, Lord, that your love is so great. Let us bring that love out. Let us touch other people. Let us look for you in every day, and we will find you faithful. We pray in your name. Amen.